Hi, welcome to RC Pylon TV. I'm Don Stigall, and today's video is about building a Miss Cosmic Wind EF1 fuselage. I have all the parts laid out for the most part. Um, I've taken a picture that appeared at the start of the video that you can refer back to the position of the parts. I find it very convenient to lay out the parts near where they go so it's easy to um, put things together. I've snapped one together and this is what it looks like. It's a good looking airplane. It's not rounded on the, the decking and it's just taped together, but it let me figure out how all the pieces fit together. So it was very instructive for that. I was going to deconstruct this one for the video, but I think I know how to assemble it in a way that um, will make sense and um, without having to go through the taking it apart. So I'm going to get started. For the first part of the video, I'm going to build the forward fuselage plywood crutch. There are sides that tab lock with the bottom of the fuselage and I don't need those right now and there are sides that glue to the framework and they also have a crutch to form the rear shape of the fuselage and with it tab locking together it should be very easy to build a straight fuselage. I haven't punched out all the little tab locks on these sides yet. But I'm going to get those parts out of the way because I don't need them. And I'm also going to get these parts out of the way because this is what I need. This could be considered one of the main parts. The sides have a right and a left on them because there is a right thrust in the firewall. One of the original ones didn't have that, but uh, Dan Kane and a lot of other people have found out that uh, having some right thrust really helps the performance of the airplane. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the former that goes in here and I'm going to actually I did that wrong what I'm going to do is take the tray for the battery that fits like so and I'm going to take the other side First thing I want to do is take the firewall and position it on this tray. The firewall's in two pieces and I'm actually going to epoxy it.
It looks like I need to do a little bit of trimming, which is not unusual with a tab lock kit. When they're laser cutting, there's kerf. That's where the laser actually cuts part of the space away. And the designers have to allow for the kerf. And sometimes that means that parts are just a little snug or just a little loose. So you have to be adaptable. I have to take my glasses off so I can see what I need to do here. The tabs on the front of the battery hat, battery tray need to be cut down a little bit. We'll probably correct this in the kit in future cuttings of the kit so you don't have to deal with this. Now the firewall fits on just fine. The next pieces are marked right and left as well. They go into the firewall and you don't want to insert them all the way because you've got to fit a former in there. Let me get the other side, the, the left side, and put it in. And now I'm going to take the former that fits in here and it has matching slots for the And there we already have something that we could potentially glue together, except one problem. When I was putting it back together, I put it upside down and the thrust is wrong. So make sure you keep your orientation while you're working or else things don't fit together too well. When you get this down to where you can get the tabs in, just simply insert the tabs and then get your tabs from the bottom structure in. 
So we already have this together. Our thrust looks right. We have a hole for the motor. We have a hole for the motor wires and a hole to go down to an ESC under the battery tray. And now we can take the landing gear support sides and the landing gear support goes in just like this and it jigs itself and what I'm going to do is put just a little bit of tape on here to hold things in place And before I put the other side on, I'm going to go ahead and get the former that goes in here situated. And to do that, I have to put the landing gear plate in position. And I want to glue that down to the bottom. So what's going to happen is after I get this portion glued together, I'm going to put this side on and then we'll get the firewall into the notch for the firewall and I'll tape it together and then I'll start CAing but before I do that I'm going to mix up some slow curing epoxy it has a 50 minute pot life and about a four hour thin film working time so I can go ahead and glue the firewall and glue the landing gear doubler to the bottom and then I'll CA everything else together. I had to stop and I'm restarting because I found what looks to be a minor flaw in a piece unless I just don't understand uh, how it's supposed to go. But I actually have two different versions of the Miss Cosmic Wind and the piece on the newer one it's not like the piece on the old one that I had assembled and uh, I may find out from Dan Kane that I have it wrong. But anyway, um, I'm going to restart with where I was here, um, putting on the side. If I have the wrong side, I need the right side because the thrust isn't in the right place. So I can just stick that right there and I'm going to tape it in place while I get everything else. Together.
What I'm going to do now is fit this former into the side. And while that's like that, well, Actually, what I'm going to do is add a piece of tape right here because this will help me tremendously in getting this together. And nothing gets glued over that. And I'm going to take the piece of the tray that fits into here and I'm going to take one of the sides That actually goes on the side here, and the notches let's do it a different way. Let's fit this first. What I'm going to do is take that in place. And now I'm going to work on getting this in place and getting the first piece of the landing gear block in place. And then I'll fit it into the former. and snap this side back in place. I'll let a couple of pieces pop out. I need to get back into place.
And now I just need to snap on the other side. And I found it's a good idea to tape across this. Hold it in place. Sorry, let it slip. What I need to do is go ahead and get this other side on. Let's take that down. More tape here. I'm going to tape it here just so that former doesn't pop out. Okay, and the firewall is not restrained by the sides at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and stick one more piece in. And that's the top of the cow support get it flush with the outside and just to be sure it stays flush what I'm going to do is there's a little gap and I'm going to put some tape there to keep it lined up And we're not quite ready to start gluing yet because the radio tray needs to be put in and the former 
that goes in this area. There was a little area right here that extended into the area where the rear crutch fits. Uh, we'll probably correct that in the kit, but you may have to make a little cut uh, right there or else in your crutch. So the crutch now just slides right into here for the radio tray. And then you put it in the tab in the radio tray and now we have the radio tray in place we're ready to mount the firewall what i'm going to do is add some tape back here Hold everything together. But it's so self jigging that it's hard to not build it straight. And you don't really have a surface that you can put it on, but I can tell you there's very little twist. So now what I'm going to do is mix up my slow curing epoxy I'm going to get my CA ready and for my CA I use Bob Smith and I use these applicators I use Bob Smith CA and for my thin I put a piece of blue tape so I'll remember that that's my thin and I have another one for my medium I actually opened the wrong one Well, everything looks right. All the pieces are in place. I'm going to mix up a batch of epoxy, West 105 resin with 209 hardener. I took the front or the I took I took the firewall piece off that was on the front just so I have easier access to brush on some epoxy. And I'm putting this on very, very light because there's not much of a gap 
and I don't want it getting into the holes where I'm going to CA the other parts. So very careful about that and now stick it together with the F in front obviously and I'm going to stick it back on This is why I like doing the gluing while I'm putting the pieces together because I didn't get it aligned exactly. Now the firewall is in place and I'm going to put some epoxy where the firewall joins. I'm going to put some epoxy on the tabs. Now, I'm just going to pull it together. And wipe off the excess epoxy. And I'm going to tape this together and then before I start going I'm going to inspect carefully to make sure that everything's where it belongs like that piece had slipped up on me. That's why I was talking about it slipping. <clears throat> With this epoxy, I have plenty of time to mount the bottom landing gear plate. So what I'm going to do is hold it in some strategic spots
I love the smell of CA. Some people have a problem with it, but I love to know it's kicking off. Now I'm going to go up back here. I'm going to take this tape off so I can see there's a piece well while on it. Is this piece will still move. Now I'm going to glue these side pieces together. And I'm going to glue myself to the airplane.
that's a whole lot of CA, and even that got to me a little bit. Well, I should be able to take the tape off of this middle area now. And the reason for that is while my epoxy is still usable, I'm going to put the landing gear doubler in. With the epoxy. This is not needed anymore. I haven't used any medium yet. There aren't that many gaps. I will come back with some medium after everything's cured. But the thing I'm going to do right now is put the landing gear double piece in. I want to double check and make sure it fits and it's going to go right in. So now I'm going to take some epoxy. And I'll be liberal with this because it needs to hold up for the landing gear. And I'm going to use a technique my father taught me about gluing wood parts together. Put glue on both sides of the part and you're more likely to get a 
good bond. It adds just a tiny bit of weight, but probably well less than a gram. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and take care of one other thing. That is the pieces that go from the cow ring to the firewall and because this is plywood to plywood. So I'm going to put a little epoxy in here, put some on the front pieces. Push them down well. And then I'm just going to CA them in place. And that concludes my first session on building the Miss Cosmic Wind. I'm going to let it cure upside down and I'm going to use a little bit of flange protector just to make sure nothing sticks to my wood here. And I'm going to go out and fly a quad and I'm going to go mow some yard. And one thing I'm going to do while I'm thinking about it so I'm going to go ahead and add some more CA right here. back in here and I will clean this with acetone so that I can reuse it. It's a good idea
It's a good idea when you're doing epoxy work or CA work that you have acetone available and a poly cup. Acetone will eat through a plastic cup. So what I'm going to do is just suck in the acetone and blow it out. Make sure you fully fill the, the bulb up where there will be resulting S, uh, CA in there. So it's completely full. Just squirt it out. Pour out your CA, don't let your animals get it. I have a can where I put used CA in the can for used black or thinner. So after I get done wrapping up here, I'll take care of that. The Miss Cosmic Wind will be available in the next few weeks. I will be making molds for the cow and the hatch and I'm gonna add the three degrees of right thrust to the cow ring so it matches up nicely. Uh, it's one reason I wanted to go ahead and get this fuselage built ahead of the Estralita fuselage. I'm also working on Estralita and Shark EF1 molds. And Sigal Hobbies will be selling the Miss Cosmic Wind EF1, the Estralita EF1, and the Shark EF1. At the minimum, we may add additional kits, uh, may reissue the Outrageous and the Scarlet Screamer, and I'm going to seek approval for a uh, traditional Cassette uh, Hershey Bar wing airplane using the same fuselage as the Outrageous. There's a little plane called In a Rush that I like, and I want to have a low aspect ratio wing cassette to be able to see how it does so thanks for watching i hope you'll subscribe to rc pylon tv i'm in a good mood now especially that i'm feeling better and i hope you'll subscribe to rc pylon tv and donstigall.com and uh, stay tuned for lots more pylon related videos i'll be doing everything from little electrics up to giant scale and um, looking forward to having a lot more fun with RC. Hi, welcome to RC Pylon TV. I'm Don Stegall. This video is phase two of building a fuselage for a Miss Cosmic Wind EF1 pylon racer. In the first phase, I built up the crutch for the forward portion that has the wing tubes and the radio tray and the landing gear in the firewall and um, what's left now is to build the aft section and it's tab locking so I've eyeballed this a lot it looks very straight uh, with the tab locking construction uh, and the excellent engineering by Dan Kane uh, this airplane goes together quite nicely. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mix up a batch of epoxy with a 50 minute pot life. This will give me plenty of time to mount the sides and the lower sides to the parts that have to be glued with epoxy. I could go in with slow curing CA, but I'm gonna do it with epoxy.
the sides fit into tabs. There are three tabs that hold this side in place. So what I'm going to do is spread some epoxy Should have put some plans protector down first. We'll have to wipe up the glue that I got on my little work board here. Now, I had marked this with an R because when you put the formers in, depending on which direction you put this former behind the radio tray, they need to go in a certain orientation. So, I'm going to fit those on there and I'm just going to put a small clamp at the front. And we'll lay this down like this and see how close it looks. Um, clamps in the way. <clears throat> well, I can't really do that. So what I'm going to do is just put a clamp here. And now what I'm going to do is come back here, stick that tab back in its back in its hole. And I don't have something lined up properly. So what I'm going to do is put a clamp here to make sure it stays in this tab. I'm going to put another one here. And we'll pull the rear of the fuselage together and tape it. Now I'm going to put this former in place. They have a flat spot which you should make sure is consistent with the flat spot of this former. Otherwise, your push rod holes will not be lined up properly. And what I'm going to do is tape that from the bottom, which you'll see why in just a second. And 
while I'm getting that in. I'm going to put the rear former in, and I'm also going to put a piece of tape across the back of it just to make sure it holds it in place. And now I'm going to take the crutch and lay it in place. We have to loosen the rear of the fuses just a little bit. I'm going to take that back. And I'm going to take off my glasses and do a close inspection to make sure everything looks lined up. This piece had slipped just a little bit, so I'm clamping it in place. And I'm going to glue one little area there. And glue one little area right here. Just to make every, sure everything stays lined up up here. I'm going to put just a little bit of CA, even though there's a 
epoxy under there. the former in from the outside. And we'll glue this rear former in from the outside. Now we'll glue the extended part of the fuselage crutch. I can still get to that easily. Glue it in. And now what I'm going to do is glue the formers. Looks nice and straight. So I'm going to take the tape off and finish gluing it. One thing I'm going to do is there's a little wing fillet that's even though it's got epoxy on it, I'm going to CA it so it stays in place. And we'll see a around this former. Make sure it stays in place. See a around this tab. 
CA around this tab. Now I can take the clamps off because it's going to stay in place. It makes it easier to work with. And now that I've got all the tape off, I'm going to go over all the joints. And here's that lovely smell of CA kicking off again. <clears throat> Just one piece of tape. careful because there's CA all over the place. The sides glue on to here, And there's enough give that you can pull it back and put the epoxy under it. It's 
So I'm just going to tack these in place at the formers. So those are on there. We'll get it on the other side. One thing I'm going to do to make this a little easier is to go ahead and glue the back. What I'm doing is lining up 
two side pieces and tacking them together. These pieces are lined up. I'm just going to put a little CA in there. See how the bottom fits. Everything fits nicely, but I missed one thing while snap assembling one together. And I want this airplane to be correct, so I'm going to have to make a minor deviation on the videotaping. Normally I would just go ahead and put this in and glue it, but there are places for stringers on the formers which would allow rounding the, the rear bottom of the fuselage a little bit. So what I'm going to do is complete the work I'm doing right now and glue the bottom on after I've made some stringers, after I've let it cure. I'm going to go ahead and get some epoxy in here up under the sides I'm going to tape that down in place. Thank you. 
I could go ahead and put in the deck formers, but they also require stringers. And while I'm cutting stringers, I want to cut stringers for those as well. So I'm going to take some plans protector. Roll out the plans protector. And we get a little bit of this glue that I got on here off. So, except for gluing on the bottom and putting on the deck, the fuselage is mostly complete. The basic structure is in place. Everything else is dependent on this structure. It looks straight. Uh, the tab construction is very cool. It's actually very easy. If you're not trying to videotape, it makes it a lot easier. Um, but I uh, hope you'll stay tuned to RC Pylon TV and DonStigall.com and subscribe to each of them. I have a lot more videos coming. And uh, thanks for watching. Hi, welcome to RC Pylon TV, the channel for all things RC Pylon racing related. I'm Don Stigall. I'm working on a build series of a Miss Cosmic Wind EF1 Pylon Racer that will be sold by StigallHobbies.com. The airplane is a very nice tab lock laser cut kit and I've done Two building sessions on the fuselage so far, phase one and phase two. This is phase three. 
and you can see that it's taking the shape of a plane. The hatch is how you access the battery compartment here. It has a wing tube and a two-piece wing. Pre-cut slots for the servos. It's got holes for the push rods that come out the exits here. And you'll see that the bottom is not on yet. I didn't notice when I first snapped one together that there's a place for stringers before you put this bottom plate piece on. So I've cut some eight inch by eight inch stringers and I'm going to get those in. And here I have to cut the simple break actually did the job. So I've got the stringer in place lined up with the tabs. What I should have done before I started this is open the CA. I need to be soaking my caps for my CA in acetone while I'm building because using these um, dispensers causes the sides to get clogged up. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more. And the first thing I need to do is make sure this first stringer is lined up and in place and come back to the back and then come to the next former back it there and tack it there I'm going to let that harden for just a second. And what I need to do is where the tabs are, I need to tack it down so it doesn't move in those areas as well. When I put the bottom on, I'll use thick CA to fill the gaps. So one stringer is in place. like before I have to provide a relief here. And I'm going to line what I 
left at the tab. You tack it. And then I'm going to line it up up front. Now I'm just going to run CA all the way down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side now. The bottom overlaps the landing gear plate by an inch or so. And I'm going to go down the stringer with thick CA so I can reposition this if needed. And now I'm going to take the bottom and start from the front. And I'm going to tack it down in some strategic places with instant CA. Bring myself to the airplane again.
I have one little spot that's not stuck well. Well, to keep myself from getting stuck constantly, I'm going to kick this joint. Now it's time for the debt formers. I'm going to put these on with medium for a little gap filling. Run a little thing along there just to get it set in position.
Well, since I used thin on that, these are already hard enough to put the stringers in. So now we have the back stringers in place and there are three pieces of wood that cover the rear deck area and you have to sand the edges while you're putting them on and then round it. I'm going to let this harden and I'm going to cut the stringers off and um, then I'll go up I'll sand and glue the other pieces on. Back in a few minutes. I cut the stringers off even with the formers and now I'm going to sand down those stringers uh, using a 12 inch um, uh, sanding block and I'll sand them down to where they're even with the formers. It'll take a few minutes um, but uh,
I now have the stringers sanded down to the formers and I'm going to see how the side fits. Let's see how much sanding I need to do. Because this is a curved surface. Because this is a curved surface here, <laughs> I'm going to try to make this piece fit better. Okay, I need to use the thick to glue this on. So I'm going to put some down the stringer. I'm going to put some extra on the joint. I'm going to take my glasses off. <clears throat> I didn't get this in exactly the right position and the CA is trying to go off on me. So I've got to add some more CA.
making it sure, making sure it's down against that stringer well. And there's a gap here, but there's going to be various filling that I have to do anyway, so no big deal. Where I fit the other piece. And I need to do the same thing that I did to it. This piece needs to be rounded here. <clears throat> now I'm going to position this first. Need to be sure it's stuck. I'm gonna get some man. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Instead of trying to sand all this down, I'm gonna try using a razor plane to get some of the excess off. That's enough playing for me. I will just use my sanding bar. Okay, I'm not going to completely finish sanding that down, um, but you get the idea. <coughs> the, it needs to be rounded so that the, the hatch fits well. <coughs> And with that, The fuselage is done except for final sanding and filling and it won't take more than a couple hours to do that. Um, I'm getting ready to start on the wing and the tail surfaces are already, have already been glued together. So here we have the mostly completed fuselage. It still needs blind nuts for the landing gear. It needs blind nuts for the uh, electric motor. Uh, the stabilizer and the fan will have to be rounded and slotted, but this turtle deck will be, <clears throat> but this deck will be easy to shape to get it to fit. I just don't want to try to do that under the constraint of video time. Um, the next phase will be building the wing and that'll be coming soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to RC Pylon TV. We have a lot more coming about everything from small electrics to giant scale and Subscribe to Don Stegall for the stuff that I put on that channel that doesn't necessarily go on RC Pylon D. So thanks for watching and um, stay tuned for more videos.